Warning, the following game may be following you. What? No. Oh, okay, the following game is really mad because unlike other games, it doesn't try to obey or emulate any rules of physics correctly. In fact, it was programmed on the basis of if it looks and feels cool, then it's cool. This leads to a very unique gameplay experience and like anything before, this game is also a 3D cartoon game. Not a normal 3D game, so be prepared because what you're about to experience is truly something close to stepping out of this world and into an alternate reality one. What you're about to experience is a game called Need for Madness. Hmm. You could also disregard all the above if you want. And we're never going to find the new unless we get a little crazy. Uh, that's... That's uh, iconic right there. I mean, doesn't get much more iconic than that. Hey, get back to the game. Come on, I don't have all day. Oh boy, this is uh, already kind of nostalgic. Uh, first things first, you gotta thank Mr. Uh, Phyrexian for making this game playable again. Uh, he's done that, he, it's been a couple of years since he's done that. I've played it once. Uh, since he sent me these files, and I'm going to play it again, and I'm going to do some commentary. Uh, let's get, check the credits first. I think I changed a bunch of stuff. Well, obviously, that copyright is not really valid, I think. Pretty sure that's not how copyright law works. Uh, madness at RadicalPlay.com. Original Deep for Madness by Omar Wally. That, that goes in the thanks section as well. Uh, Mr. Omar Wally... Uh, thank you for making a very good and very uh, easily modifiable game for uh, a teenager to express its, its creative, creativity through. Uh, the Need for Madness and the community around Need for Madness and Need for Madness hacking was a big part of uh, my teenage years, so I uh, got Mr. Omar Wally to thank for that. Uh, let's see. I think these credits... There, there's, there's Mr. Phyrexian. Uh, I'm pretty sure these credits had more stuff, like special thanks uh, to specific people who helped me uh, with this game. I'm not going to go back like, to the original version uh, because it doesn't work, number one. Uh, and number two, because I don't no longer have any of the Java hacking, uh, hacking tools as I did... 10 years ago. Uh, and yes, it's been 10 years. It's been 10 years since this, since this game was released. In fact, I could tell you right now when it was released, and it was. Well, the, the beta version was released in 2009. The official version was May 2010, so it's been over 10 years and 6 months since this, this game has been released, officially, or this hack, let's say. And there was a revision in 2012. I wonder what I did in the revision. I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't matter. I'm sure it's archived somewhere. Uh, so let's see. This background, obviously, is not the original background. It's some sort of flames, uh, like generic wallpaper thing. And I just recolored it blue. That That's pretty much entirely the story about that. A lot of these things in, in V1 are so basic and so, like, I mean, I could say crap, but it's stuff that's not really, I mean, it's, it's not up to any standard whatsoever. Uh, like, the title, which says Need for Man, well, there's there's an Insano head missing here from the middle, top and center. Uh, the, the cars are poorly cropped. The Need for Man, this title, is just completely generic. Uh, the... Uh, the background is just some random sparks and the thing behind play and game instruction credits like this weird blob thing was from the original game in fact the menu was entirely from the original game uh, I think if we uh, go play uh, by the way the top banner shows cars that are not even in this game so that, that's the amount of polish that went into V1 uh, that's not to say that the game is lacks lacks you know care and attention it's just that stuff like this was not the priority for me. It was just stuff that you gotta hack together and just do and get it out of the way. Uh, so you can focus on the what matters, really, which was, at the beginning, it was just tracks. And then eventually, I, sh I should just get over with uh, this so we can listen to some music. Okay, so thanks for playing, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. Okay, that's better. 
uh, everything is the same here. You need some Java hacking to do this, or maybe not. I'm not sure. Hmm, that's a good question. Is this just an image? Might just be an image. Uh, so yeah, you can already see fuel and fuel tank. This is stuff that I changed for absolutely no reason. It's stuff that really didn't matter whatsoever. Uh, okay, a few hints. Some easy, some stages is easier to waste. Some stages easier to race. Wow, really? One party stage. Hell yeah. This is completely unchanged. Uh, by the way, Tornado Shark is not in this game. Arrow, blah blah blah. Yep. There we go. There's some good music. So anyway, like I was saying, well, a lot of this stuff is really unpolished. Like, this background is just a random wallpaper of ice that I found. And I recolored it brown. Like sandy brown. I don't know why. There's no reason why. Uh, most of this remains unchanged. Select your machine is a really bad <laughs> image that's not even centered. That's very good. Flame bullet though, that's a sexy car. Wow. Never managed to get the proportions just right on this. I think the front could have been a little bigger. What else has changed? Top speed acceleration handling seems to be the same. Aerial control strength. Tank capacity. Mmm. That's new. The arrows are the same, continues the same. Ooh, yeah. That's good stuff. The bars are changed as well. Uh, it's, they go from like they go through the spectrum, the whole rainbow, which is fine. That's, I mean, could have been worse. <laughs> this is a really good looking car. Damn, I did spend a lot of time on it. I think it was the one of the ones that I spent the most time with. There's a weird thing with polygons in this game that where they don't really render properly. So the front is like looks like it's caved in, like the the mirror. Not the mirror, the, the windshield. But everything else about it is just real good. Way to go, 15-year-old me. Safari Wrangler looks real bad. Wow. Baby blue. And I, I see I didn't change the, the bottom piece. You can already see it clipping through the wheels. Hmm. It's not bad. I think it was one of the first custom, completely custom cars that I made. Hip E. Hip E. Very nice. Should have made it like have a bigger nose up front, but well, I'm okay with this. This car is pretty good. Sad that the that the headlights clip through the car, but you know that's the NFM engine at work. Stinger Z3. Really like the way this car turned out, even though it's just a mashup of. Max Revenge and La Vita Crab. Good stuff. Oh yeah, by the way, most of these have hacked stats, which is something that you can only do with Java, which I don't know how to work with. But it was just a matter of changing a couple strings and there are some guides. Uh, people like KSM and LRC and IP figure this stuff, stuff out, so I didn't have to. And I think they were mentioned in the special thanks, uh, or in the credits, in the original version. Let's see what else we have. Dirty Buffalo. Again, the snubby nose. Really didn't have a lot of, sp didn't, didn't give a lot of space for the engines on this game. Good looking car though, it's, it's, it's definitely not bad. Okay, there's one of the originals. Lead Oxide and Black. That's okay. Ooh, the original Defuhrer. That's that's cool. I, I remember this car. It's a shame that the, the tracks don't work, but it was a relatively simple car to make and it looked pretty cool as a like a boss car. Red OX is a product of my laziness. Oh well. It doesn't look half bad, but I think car number eight, uh, car number nine, I think it is, deserved something better uh, in retrospect. But again, it's one of those things that you come up with against when you're a developer. You either finish the game or you spend forever worrying about the details. Uh, 
so yeah, Radical X is, is fine. Again, this cage is the original cage from the original NFM. And Chaos Chariot, who, ha who has some exhaust pipes that exhaust absolutely nothing. Exhaust into a wall. So yeah, DR Monster, but without supports. Uh, such is life. Another one of those decisions that had to be made quick. Alright, let's, let's put the flame bullet to the test. Oh, Farmer Ted's Revenge. Oh, I forgot to mention, by the way. That song in the car select is called uh, Arsenic by a guy called Baroque. And I'll talk about the music more uh, as we're, we get going here. Choose your destiny. Let's choose our destiny. This is Farmer Ted's Revenge. This song is called Between Two Waters by a guy called Dope. This background is a background that I found online at some point and was my desktop background. I cannot tell you what the hell it is. It's just some random... Oh! Oh, I had forgotten about this. This is epic. <laughs> this is really great stuff. Stage 1. Farmer Ted's Revenge. Shall we? Let's do it. Nice... Uh, Ford graphic there. Let's go. Original Insano lines right there. Nice spikes. Checkpoints. Oh man. These are some original sounds right here. Oh boy. I suck at this game. I remember sucking really bad at this game. Oh my god. Okay. This is uh, some violence going on here. Start over. Okay. So, the development of this track was pretty bare bones back in the day. It's just, uh, well, this is the introductory track from the original NFM, but with this bit here, this glitchy uh, checkpoint thing. Oh god. Okay, did I pass that? I think so. These dirt things were added as well. Oh my god, dude, these guys are fucking... Oh, maybe I shouldn't swear. But uh, they're, they are violent. They are aggressive. The AI on this track. This checkpoint, I don't think it was here at the beginning. Neither was this uh, hurdle. This was original. Those DR monsters are obviously not original. It's always, a shame, it's always been a shame that they were not solid. You could just pass through them, but whatever. So yeah, this is this is just this was completely noob. Uh, this uh, Mogadex trying to uh, make a track, just make something. That's completely new there. The original car scheme for this was just horrid. It was just this green thing. The, the, the original video is still around. It was uh, published. Let me, see, let me see when it was published. Uh, published in August 5th, 2008. So that is over 12 years ago. That is a long time. Okay. Let's try to actually finish this track before I uh, run out of things to talk about. Alright. So I wasted someone, apparently. This track is called A King is Born. And it's an amazing track. In fact, a lot of the tracks in this game, a lot of the music in this game, is very good. Uh, there was it was ripped straight out of modarchive.org, which had some really nice choice, really nice uh, music to choose from. Some good old school Amiga mods, and thankfully for me. Uh, it's all free, and nobody has ever asked me to remove a song from this game, which is nice. Mostly because I don't think any of them know that it actually even exists. Uh, let's see. This glitchy uh, healing thing is just done by changing the uh, one of the spinning angles. It's bizarre looking at this. It's been so long. Okay, who's left? This guy is gonna try to heal. I'm gonna snipe him on the way back. Okay, I figured out how to change arrows, which is something that 
you should basically do every time. Because you, I mean, most likely you know where in the track you are, like racing wise. There you go. It always takes a little bit of time. Let's say there you see the the sprite like clipping through the wheels or the, the, the polygon. It always takes a while between the transition of wasting everybody. Oh wow, this is a... Uh, uh, <laughs> right. Between the, the transition of you killing everybody and the game actually figuring out that you won. I don't know why that happens. I mean, NFM is riddled with bugs and glitches, especially NFM 1. It's, I mean, it's charming in a way. So anyway, oh yeah, that was Farmer Ted's Revenge. Farmer Ted, by the way, is a character from uh, Death Rally, which is a game I took a lot of inspiration from. Let's see, let's, con let's keep going here. Next video, next video, wow. The next track is uh, Scorpion Venom. This originally re released on, oh my god, this is... This is my first time with OBS, by the way. This is uh, pretty amateurish when it comes to video. But whatever, I don't really care. I'm just uh, trying to uh, relive through old memories and recount some of my experiences. Okay, so Scorpion Venom uh, was originally called Over and Under, which was a horrible, a horrible name. And Scorpion Venom is not that much better. Uh, but... Well, gotta do what you gotta do. This song is called uh, Desert Dawn by Lizard King. And again, great songs by awesome artists. One of the things I'm most proud of in this, in this game is the soundtrack. So yeah, the gimmick of this track is that tunnel. And every t I, t I try to make every track have a gimmick. And the gimmick on this track is there's a tunnel you have to jump over. That's literally it. You go under the tunnel and then you go over at the tunnel. Uh, a lot of these tracks are very, like, poorly designed. I mean, they were the first tracks I, I made, so it's just natural. Uh, I think a lot of this is actually copied straight from the original, uh, contrary to popular belief, which is stage 2 in NFM 1. There we go. Especially the dirt tracks. They look too good, like too well aligned for it to have been me. This track does have the skewed checkpoints, which is a cool thing. But otherwise it's very there's very little of note other than a tunnel. Which in uh, 2008 a tunnel was le epic. Okay, it was fantastic. NFM was never the same again. Color scheme in this track is not amazing. Uh, there's only this guy left, so I'm trying to try to just take care of him. Oh no! <laughs> I made a mistake. There was more than one car uh, left. Okay, I still have to talk about st other stuff, actually. That is, has been has gone unmentioned. Like in the in the top left, there's lap wasted position and the position, and on the top right there is damage and fuel. And as you can see, one of those is different from the others. Uh, fuel is the only thing that was changed. Well, that used to be power. Wow, that is this is some really bad gameplay. Uh, <laughs> I ch I changed fuel uh, or rather power to fuel because because I could essentially so that's pretty much the entire story the other graphics look awful in uh, in V1 I'm not sure I changed them in V2 I'm pretty sure I didn't because most of the tracks in the original NFM which was a great game were had like really light color schemes and so the the letters are anti-aliased to like a, ba a light background, and a lot of the tracks. Uh, I mean, uh, when people started modding tracks, they well they figured out how how to put in different background or different colors for the sky and stuff like that. And so I'm just gonna try a different car because this is uh, this is not working out. I like racing, so 
these tracks are really annoying to play if you uh, if you have a really a fragile car like Levite Crap. But yeah, the, the, every track in NFF1 has a light background. So when everyone figured out that the values on top of the track file were RGB values, well, everyone went crazy with color schemes. Which is pretty cool because, well, it was completely different and unique from the original game. Uh, that was that was one of the things that uh, were not capitalized upon in NFM2, unfortunately. Everything is rather plain in that game. No, there's no crazy funky colors like sand, red, and purple. Which, you know, you could say is, is good design, which it kind of is, but it's also rather uninteresting, when you, especially when you have something that's capable of it. Uh, it makes it annoying to have back, dark backgrounds to uh, look at the images, but you will see that that's pretty easily fixed with a few changes. Wow, okay, that worked. Can I destroy this guy? Hopefully. It says fuel up when you do stunts, which is cool. There we go, I wasted him. Didn't change the wasted him graphic, unfortunately. I did change the game highlight graphic. It's got a, a drop of petrol on it. And th those graphics were, like they had, a, I didn't know how to make graphics transparent back in the day. So it's just it was just a black a white square with game highlight as it is right now, and KSM actually was the guy who took make the backgrounds transparent and made the white border, and that's what I was mentioning before. Oh, the congratulations also uh, custom. Dirty Buffalo has been unlocked. Cool. Pit of Doom. I'm gonna talk about this track a little bit later, but as I was saying, the the graphics with the white background make it easier, or rather, make it possible to see uh, words in dark stages and light stages. So it's it would have actually been really easy to make something that with the, the engine, the available engine, that works. Anyway, this is Dirty Buffalo, the replacement, the replacement for Max Revenge, which is. In retrospect, my favorite car from the original game. I like DR Monster too, or, or Doctor Monster. I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce it. I was I always thought it was DR Monster, but Doctor is fine too. Again, awesome music. This is Physical Presence uh, by someone whose name I will mention as soon as we finish the track, or maybe if I just get wasted. There we go. I wasted him. No, I lost. Okay. Uh, this is by Jogair Lil Liljedal, probably Swedish. Let's keep going here. So yeah, Pit of, Pit of Doom is a track that is a rework of someone else's track. Uh, so I was not the first guy to modify NFM, not even close. In fact, when I started, there was already like documentation of which tracks, uh, which track pieces. Uh, were coded to each of the numbers. So I just kind of stole that. I think I was one of the first guys doing videos on YouTube. And in fact, a lot of people were asking me at the time how to do it. Uh, but I never made a tutorial because, well, there were already tutorials and there were already, like, do there was already documentation on how to do it. That's number one, reason number one. Reason number two is that. I didn't know how to do it. <laughs> a lot of these things were trial and error. You just got to figure it out on the fly. The original track, the original Pit of Doom, was fast and. F no, I don't. I don't even remember the name of this track. I don't even know. It was by a guy called Ripes uh, something something. I would say his full name, but his full name is just a disaster. It's just got random letters like HQQ something something. He made a cool track though. This is a, a nice track. It was just a little messy, like uh, roads clipped into each other. Uh, this bit is completely new. 
the pit was already there, I, I'm pretty sure. But it's just a refined version of this track. So let's see. The color scheme is also completely different from what he had. He had a it just... Um, I think it was the original Snake Dance colors. Three, three laps, let's go. AI getting wasted. Lead Oxide and Snake Dance is, is a real asshole, so... It's... Yeah, I remember Snake Dance being really hard. But the AI in this game is... Subpar, you could say. It's just... Well, at least at following the state, the custom stages. We had no idea how to modify AI. At first, we didn't even know that you could, like, how to modify Java at all. Like, changing the names of... Uh, so changing, like... The names of the cars required Java hacking, changing uh, a bunch of stuff. You won! Wow, that is a horrible graphic. Was that done on, on cool text? I'm pretty sure, yeah. But yeah, this like stuff like the tunnels, like the tunnel at the beginning of that track. This is stuff that people were like, wow, you can do that? You can just put put a tunnel like uh, you're coming for you next, but anywhere. Okay, this is... Oh, God. Uh, by the way, that name, the name of that uh, track is Pit of Doom because there is a pit of spikes. That is literally it. This is stage four. I got petrol in my veins, which substitutes the, the grapefruit power, I believe, which is the worst track to substitute this with because... This is more like an obstacle course track, whereas the Grapefruit Power was just a pure race track. Which the AI was really good at following, and actually, I remember it being quite challenging in the original NFM. You gotta jump over this. Oh, nope, that failed. But yeah, I Got Petrol in My Veins is a reference, again, to Death Rally, where the hardest difficulty is called... I've got petrol in my veins, unsurprisingly. Really fan of the color scheme, though. The green horizon looks pretty cool. I remember thinking I was really clever with this trap. Then you could just, you know, not engage with it at all. Unless you want to heal. I mean, if you want to heal, I think there's a... Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's another hoop. Oh, God. So slow. Okay. This dirt, dirt part. You had to be really careful with dirt parts, otherwise you were gonna do, uh, gonna do uh, poorly. Oh god, I'm almost dead. Because dirt tracks, I mean, they don't look. It, you can cheat with uh, asphalt, because you know it just kind of all looks the same, unless it's a turn. Oh boy, that is no way. There is no way I can reach that. That's Space Debris, a very famous track in the in the mod community. And an awesome one. Unfortunately, NFM, I mean, I don't know what... Oh, God, why did I do that? I don't know what... Uh, I mean, I know why. Uh, I think Omar wanted to f fit each of the original tracks to a sp supposed atmosphere. So whatever, whatever code he uses to play the tracks makes them sound... First of all, makes them sound completely muffled from their original versions and it also alters the speed at which they are wow okay the speed at which they're played which means that some songs are you thought they were fast but they were actually slow and some songs you thought they were slow and they were actually fast i, I really don't get that decision i mean i, I this was a this was a, a game that you would play, play on your browser so it might have something to do with that with saving some uh, some data, like with saving some bandwidth. Oh boy. This game is infamously glitchy. You, you'd never know what's gonna happen. Especially since we're using like custom stuff. Oh boy. Oh boy. 
we're using custom stuff, uh, so the game is not built to handle this sort of problem. I mean, it's not debugged whatsoever. And none of us knew how to do it, so... At this point, it's all experiment, 100% experimentation. This track's pretty, pretty barren. It's one, one of the first ones I did. Uh, it's a racetrack, but... Damn, there is really... It's really hard to maintain uh, high power in here. At least no one's bothering me, which is nice. Lead, lead oxide is not being his usual asshole self. I mean, a lot of these earlier tracks are kind of simple, but actually, that's a lot of the times that's to a, to their benefits because some of the later tracks I did were way too complex and had way too many obstacles. You didn't, you couldn't even race. I mean, you at some point the AI just stopped and just wasted itself by default you could you could just not do anything since the beginning of the track and they were uh, like five minutes later you wouldn't you oh, this, like that you almost never see an AI in NFM in NFM 1 uh, in the hacks win by racing because there's it's the ra uh, tracks are just too complex they can't follow it and again, we had no idea how to make that any better. Okay, lead oxide has been unlocked, which is nice. Let's keep going here. Now, uh, space to, by the way, let's, let me keep going here because I want to credit everyone. A King is Born was by Dreamweaver, I don't think I mentioned that. Uh, Captain made Space Debris, and Lizard King made Desert Dawn. Uh, next track features a song called Fear 2 by Mick Rippon. So let's keep going here. This is Downtown Mayhem. This is Substitute for He's Coming For You Next, which is one of the... Or is it? Is is Coming For You Next Stage 5? What is Stage 6? Wow, I am drawing a blank here. Doesn't matter. I think. Oh yeah, it's Paninaro, Paninaro, let's fly. Uh, Downtown Mayhem. It's a city track that's in the dark. Ooh, spooky music. And the first appearance of their Fuhrer. Is this really meant to be like a horror-themed track? Where you're like in this city under construction? Oh yeah, the, <laughs> the, the, the... There was no gimmick to I Got Patrol in My Veins, it's just a track. But yeah, this one is supposed to be horror-themed, like... You, uh, you are running in, afraid of Mr... Mr. Fuhrer! One thing that is always bad about these early tracks is the walls. They never connect properly. Uh, I think a lot of it is laziness because, I mean, at some point we figured out that it's actually pretty easy to calculate walls. Uh, but, I mean, none of us knew at the time. So, oh, fuck. Uh, so at the time we didn't even bother. Uh, bother. We just placed the walls in such a way that they would create a barrier for you to get like a square in the middle Ooh, nice so that you could not escape the track and that's pretty much it a lot of the times people didn't even knew that so tracks would just go on or, or stages you could drive into infinity and then you couldn't make the way make your way back because you had no idea where the original track was ah, God damn it. that game over uh, graphic is also custom one thing about this track is that you can barely see what's going on. Uh, the video for this track was recorded by IP. I just gave him the track and said, could you please record something? Because at the time I was using Camtasia Studio, I think. I think that's what it's called. And the software didn't like how, track this was, uh, how dark this track was. And so there was, it was just a, a glitchy mess of pixels. Uh, that you had no idea what was going on. So I just asked him, and he did a really good job. He really helped me out on that. Uh, on that occasion, and many others. Oh my god, please. Please. Oh, that's terrible. And he's right there. This was this is a pretty difficult track if you don't manage to get away from Fuhrer. Because he's actually so strong that even the obstacles don't hurt him that much. Ugh. 
This is just painful. This is pain. There, there is nothing but pain right here. Can I just do it? Uh, oh my god, unbelievable. Wasted. The original Insano voices are, are pretty cool. I remember uh, there, there being talks of changing those, but I think none of us have had a good microphone at the time. You can check because I actually recorded a bunch of videos with voice, like two of two videos and with voiceover, and neither of them sounded particularly good. Oh God, save me from this hellish torment. All right, got our fixed. Another very iconic sound bite. You just sound so happy when it, when you actually fix your car. Car fixed. But yeah, this track was pretty simple. Uh, five laps, so you like you're really kind of forced to either wait it out or. I mean, it's like he's coming for you next, and he, and he's coming for you next. I was always a cowardly racer who finished the, the I think seven laps instead of uh, trying to waste L King. I just found that, I mean, I, I, I usually found that wasting El King was not fun, because it's just a matter of luck. Because the game is so glitchy that it didn't really matter what you, whether you like had power or going at a particular speed. At some point, uh, you would hit him like the wrong way, and in fact, instead of him getting damaged, it would be you. I think at this point, I, I could probably try to waste him. Just because it's been a while and he's probably crashed into a few obstacles already. Oh, that's not him. That is not him. Let's see. Ah, come here, you bastard! There we go. Good stuff. The music is really good, by the way. This this song just by itself is really nice. Let's keep going here. Downtown Mayhem has done. All right, Frostbite. Frostbite. What is the original track in NFM? What is the original si track six in NFM? I am completely blank on blanking out on this. I'm sure it's uh again. I'm so dumb because I already figured it out and now I'm looking for it again. Aninaro, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, it took me a very long time to figure out that that was an actual real-life song by an actual band. But, you know, it's pretty cool. A lot of the original soundtrack of NFM was really nice. In fact, I think I reused some of it in this version. Oh no! He's right behind me. He's right behind me. Oh no! Yes! Alright. I'm actually in third place, which means that the, the AI has actually figured out how to play this track. This is a very simple track. It's just. just a racetrack. With a couple of traps, and that's pretty much the entire story. Uh. Ugh. This song is. I listen to it regularly, so I don't need to check what the name of it is. It's called Freeze by a guy called Trash. A guy called Trash who actually makes really good music. It's music that is very much not trash. I'm still fourth, which is incredible. Oops. Oh god. Third. Jeez. Second. Okay, someone made a mistake. <laughs> through the through the track piece. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna talk about about the videos that I made. I started doing videos when I started doing tracks, which was a pretty novel concept back in my day, which was 2008, doing videos on YouTube. What is this? YouTube was two years old, I think, or two or three years old. And I remember watching gameplay videos on YouTube. 
of various games that I had played during my childhood. And that kind of inspired me to do videos myself, which was something that nobody else really was doing at all in 2008, ever. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, NFM videos, though, very scarce. There was a couple, but not many. And I think that's why my, my videos got popular. It's not really that the tracks were very good, uh, I think. It's just that they were some of the first. And in fact, I was not even, after a while, I was not even the guy getting the most views on, on NFM videos. So, those were just kind of, you know, a weird experiment that turned out pretty good because I've, I've met a lot of cool people uh, doing those videos and we eventually uh, made a forum and the rest is history. The videos themselves were pretty poor. Uh, like I said, I was using Camtasia. I think that was the name. Uh, seven tracks, am I really gonna run seven tracks on this? And they were really, really poor quality. It stuttered like hell. I recently rewatched them and I had to watch them as at 1.5 speed because otherwise it was just completely painful in a world where we have 60 FPS videos to watch the those original videos that were on this channel. Uh, I saw some comments from people that watched the video like as, oh my god, really? As late as like four months ago, which blew my mind because, well, people, I guess people have some sort of nostalgic attachment to the videos. Oh my god, dude. Uh, the pause menu is different. Ooh. The box is the same, but the pause menu is completely different. Like the words and the thing that says pause. Uh, let's see. So yeah, people are, are, some people are nostalgic for those videos, which is cool. Uh, to have people nostalgic over something you've made. Uh... It's kind of a unique feeling because, well, I myself have nostalgic for a bunch of things that other people have made, so... Uh, to have that sort of, I guess, quote-unquote honor is very nice. Uh, in my opinion, those were very bad videos. <laughs> they uh, used copyrighted music, no songs from the games. Uh, they had very sparse, sparse? sparse commentary on what was going on, and it was very childish, as you would expect. Uh, I mean, they're, they're a product of, it, of, its, of that time of, and my age, which was rather young to be making YouTube videos. Uh, I was inspired by this guy who made walkthroughs of old games. His name was es Essence DE. This is this German guy? And he made videos of a bunch of games. His first couple of playthroughs, I, I think... It was playthroughs at the time, not Let's Plays. You darn kids. But yeah, he made plays through, playthroughs of like Duke Nukem 3D and Resident Evil 4. And he put uh, metal music on top of those videos. So, at that time... Uh, I didn't, I mean, I had a, some bare knowledge of music, like bare bones knowledge. And this guy just completely blew the doors open for me in terms of, like, what was, like, popular in the realm of, like, metal music. And for me, I will, I'm eternally great. I, I've never talked to this man. I think I've commented on, on some of his videos. But I'm eternally grateful to this guy because he uh, not only did inspire me to make NFM videos, he uh, inspired me to listen to more metal, which was, is something that I carry with me to this day. I'm huge on listening to, to current music, and I'm going to try to waste these guys because seven tracks is too many. I don't know what came over me. I mean, I know exactly what came over me. It's, it's pretty much a take on the original NFM, like uh, how you, you're not, you know, you're kind of supposed to be afraid of El King. Oh God. So you're, 
you subject yourself to six tracks, six laps of, uh, what is it called? He's coming for you next. Which I did many times. Oh god, he passed me by. Ugh. He's still- oh wow, okay. He's still racing, so the, the AI really likes this, this track. I mean, it really plays it properly. Which is a surprise, because the, the AI working in this game is basically miraculous. This song is really long as well. It's it's very intricate. This is like the this slow like middle section of it. Very good stuff. Oh god, I'm I'm in second place. Okay, this is my opportunity to miss. Again, I was never very good at NFM. Uh, I was I enjoyed playing it and I really enjoyed the the stunt aspect of it. Oh no, he's healed. Oh yeah, hip, hippie and, and spinning. Name a more iconic duo. Ugh, why does he take so many hits? I did make, make this is, a, the, hippie is the uh, replacement for Nimi. And I did make his stats a lot better, so that makes sense. Their fear has been unlocked, yay! I haven't been talking about the cars too much. Uh, their fear is basically L King. I don't think I've changed anything at all. Sword, oh yeah, this is... Uh, so remember track 7, or, or stage 7 in the original NFM? It's that track that you were... Oh wow, no walls. Good job, me. It's that track where you, uh, you, you, I don't even remember its name, because you just start it, you have El King, and you waste everybody, and it's done. Uh, but in this, in this hack, I decided to make it a racetrack. And again, just like the last one, the AI actually does follow the track, which is cool. Uh, oh man, I love this song. This is uh, Oxangine. This is the original track, uh, the original song for. Uh, damn it! What is it called? It's coming. From, uh, no, uh, contrary to popular belief, stage number two. Oh God! And it was made by Uncle Tom. Just need to check right that real quick. I love this song. It's one of the best in the original uh, NFM soundtrack. As you can see, the AI, I mean, they follow the track, and they can win this one by racing, because it's just one lap, but I can still win with a really slow car. This this track's supposed to be shaped like a sword, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that. Last track was supposed to be like a mountaintop, and their Fuhrer is the ruler of the mountain. But, oh, I waste them, that's great stuff. <laughs> that's just one checkpoint away from winning anyway. I'm going to play that track again. I really enjoyed playing, like, just racing in that track. Uh, even, like, when I... Oh, no, I started the Octath one. Go back. Even when I was, like, developing the game or, and making the stages, I just take a break to enjoy some of them. And this one was, was one of the ones I enjoyed the most. Uh, it's just a cool racetrack where you actually have some... Cha there's actually some challenge to it. And it's shaped like a sword. I mean, how much cooler can you get? <laughs> Is what I thought at the time. Maybe not so much now. Oh god. Oh no. Stinger Z3 is a reference to GT, the original GTA. Where there was also a Stinger. Car, a car called Stinger, and I think there was Stinger Z8, if I'm not mistaken, in that game. Which were both really cool cars. Oh, really? And so, yeah, a lot of these stuff, a lot, a lot of stuff in this game is references to older games. Sword of Judgment is not a reference to anything, really, but 
A lot of things are. Ah, yes, I saved it. This, uh, these are the little moments that make NFM so fun. Like, much more than, you know, the racing or the wasting. The wasting is really fun, don't get me wrong. But, like, these weird glitches that you have to contend with and that you kind of, you know, overcome on the fly, you do some quick thinking. Uh, like, the way uh, half pipes are completely st stupid, like, you, you actually you crash into them to make a stunt happen. And you always take damage, so if you're if you're almost dead, you should never hit a, a half pipe or a quarter pipe. Sorry. Oh god, this is an, an annoying feature. You have to go in between the walls, and then you'd have to jump, and you jump over an area you, you had jumped before already. And now there's these things that you could waste yourself in, but it's unnecessary. So there you go. I won. Great job. Good job, me. That I that that you won picture is still <laughs> real bad. Oh, nice, excellent glitch right here. All the track pieces in this game, by the way, are the same as they were in the original NFM. I didn't add anything. Uh, I did do a lot of experimentation with with pieces to make like some unique uh, obstacles, and that's I mean that's the the beauty of NFM hacking at the beginning is to make obstacles that were not in the original game with the tools that are available. Stuff like how people use Mario Maker these days. The Octathlon was a track that was about the Beijing 2008 Olympics, if you can believe it. And it's like the NFM version of like a couple of events. I think it's like the 100 meter dash. I, I just watched the video so I know I should know what the events actually are. It's really lame, by the way, that I made two racetracks uh, right after you get Der Fuhrer, so you don't really get... Oh, that's annoying. You don't really get to enjoy wasting people with this guy, which is one of the things that uh, NFM1 did really well, was track 7 was just that track where you go in and you waste everybody. This is supposed to be the Fast and Furious and the Radical, which actually fits quite well, because this is a, just a, a straight up a race. It's a hundred meter dash, then it's the long jump, this is supposed to be the high jump, and it's really hard unless you have radical one. This is the 400 meter dash, uh, which is dumb because I have to go through more than, uh, through it more than once, and I think that 400 meters you only have to go around the track once. Whoa, okay. That is very not nice. Oh god. Oh no, that is not the checkpoint. I'm in second, so Radical 1 is actually kicking my ass right now. Okay, so 400 meters done. Oh, that, the arrow got confused there. And I think I'm gonna die because... Okay, this is... Oh, that was the pole vault. This is the triple jump. Whoa, okay. This is the... Oh my god, this is me getting completely destroyed. Hmm. Should I use lead oxide here? Probably. Lead oxide is completely unchanged from the original. It's one of the one of the cars that, I mean, I just couldn't do anything about it. Uh, I either release the game or spend another six months trying to make a new car or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe six months is a bit exaggerated, but uh, t making a car back then with with the little information that I had and with the very uh, very poor tools that we had, which was basically notepad. You just change numbers around on notepad. You try to implement the in, implement it in the game. You had no idea how it would look in the game. And then you go check the, like the last polygon that you've made was not absolute crap. And a lot of times it is, so you have to go go back. And then Livo uh, became available to most people. Uh, okay. And that solved a lot of problems. And then Car Maker came around and just everyone had it easy, man. People using Notepad. Oh, this is supposed to be the hammer throw, by the way. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, that's the track, the Oct Octathlon. One of, the, one of my better ones, I think, in the first game. 
Yeah, you ha you had nothing but Notepad. You had a, you had a text file and your imagination. You just had to go wild. Okay, so this is Night Rider, which uses the Snake Dance theme called uh, Malaria. Oh, by the way, I'm, I forgot to mention what the name of the last track was. It was Enigma by T Tip and Firefox. This is. Malaria by Baroque. So, one of the better tracks, again, from the original. This track is not originally mine. This is a hack. Or, or it's not a hack. This is a hack. The game is a hack, but the the track is a rework of a track by L. King the Five. And again, I don't remember the name of the original, but assuming the original video is still on YouTube, you can probably look that up. Uh, his username back then was L King the Five, but uh, a lot of people have changed their usernames since then. Uh, I went back to check the comments on my earlier videos, and it's, uh, it's a disgrace. <laughs> what can I say? A lot of the comments were either deleted by the people who commented or wiped by YouTube. I know a lot of people who made the comments, like their accounts, are still active. But the comments are no longer there, which is a shame because I was having a, a good time reading those and having some nostalgic th thoughts about them. Ah, Radical 1. What a great car. I think Radical X, uh, I mean, it's not my greatest creation, obviously. Uh, it's It's got a glitchy X uh, on front that clips through the car and like the shadow doesn't show like sh shows the X but not the hood of the car and likewise with the roof it's weird uh, the lights are like glitched out I mean they don't actually connect to the car they're like just floating there behind it uh, but it's a thing that I actually wanted to do to Radical 1 from the beginning was take the wings out and put a spoiler and a roof scoop on it and you know turn it turn it into a tuner car, which is what it is. And yeah, I remember hacking this, the car, to have like more aerial control. And this is just ridiculous, I think this is pretty much... I mean, I, I remember hacks where uh, people made the car like so ridiculous, like the, 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 the height you gain from a back, back spin so ridiculous that you like fly up continuously. Uh, but anyway, this, this is just a racetrack. This is just a race, like, legit track that you race. And now, also, you can lose. Which was something that would be lost in uh, <laughs> in V2, I think. I, th I don't think... I think probably, like, three or four tracks in V2 can be beaten by the AI, by racing. It's just a simple, old-school NFM track. This could be in the original, honestly. Or in in NFM 2. I won't take credit for, for the track design. This is all L King the 5, but... Uh, I changed the color scheme, and I have basically made the pieces fit, fit each other. There you go. That's what passes for work <laughs> back in the day. Gamble Scramble Tangle, what a great track, with great music by the way, called Blood, uh, no, this is um, Overdrive by Alistair Brimble. This is the original, the replacement for Confusion is in an Illusion, or Confusion is an Illusion, I don't remember. And basically the, the idea of this track is, you have, wow, well, okay, stop, please, can I explain that? No, I cannot explain. The idea is basically you have multiple choice. Since there's no arrow, uh, you kind of have to uh, figure out where you're supposed to go. And ideally, the cars, like the opponent cars, would know, and I mean, they do know, because it's in the track file, but, uh, and they would beat you, but no, it's just too complex, just like every other track. Their fury has been wasted, wow, okay. So you go left, uh, first you go right, then you go here, and hopefully you heal. Uh, DR Monster is after you. He's, he's after your ass. 
you go to the structure here and you go back through the same checkpoints you've been before. One thing that uh, made that pretty easy was the fact that you could do fake checkpoints. I mean, you could have the checkpoint model and it's still the same. You can crash into it and everything. But it's not checkpoints. You, you can make anything a checkpoint, which is something that some hackers did to make their tracks incredibly annoying. So you wouldn't know what, like, where you're supposed to go, because, I mean, it's not a checkpoint. If your checkpoint is a turn, and you don't go through the middle of the turn exactly, then it doesn't count. Or it wouldn't count back then. Anyway, I'm almost done here. This is, this is a very quick track if you know what you're doing. The track, the color scheme is absolute garbage. Uh, but whatever, I, just, I, I missed the last checkpoint because I want to fly around. It's a shame that you don't get to see where the... Oh god, he's behind me, that's why. Wow, okay. Just gonna finish it. Uh, <laughs> oh no, it's not this one. Oh, it's right there. Oh god. Okay. Phew. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of weird track design bits in that track. Like, let me go back. I missed a lot of things, like, while trying to beat the game, because beating the game and, you know, giving you a guided tour are not the same thing. Like this thing here. It's three ramps, like three small ramps with no end, like, okay, they were called half bumps, I, half bumps, uh, paved, in the original resource for uh, NFM hacking, which was just a post, I think, on, like, WikiHow or something. I don't know how, like, who made that, but thank you. You are awesome, and you made my job very easy in those early days. So yeah, half bump uh, paved, three of them in like uh, 90 degrees from each other. A hurdle, which is the like this thing here, and a half pipe covering it. So you would crash if you go into that uh, that first uh, bump with a lot of speed. A lot of these, a lot of these are like traps to like, just to be, just be, just to be completely annoying to the player. Like one of the things I always hated about the original NFM pieces was this ramp, because I'm bad at aiming and I've always hit the like the side barriers. It's literally the, the worst. I hate it. I still hate it after all these years. Uh, oh, oh. A crash. Okay, so this this was what a thing that happened rather commonly. Like you would crash the game, and I think what's gonna happen, I'm pretty sure what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to turn the game. I'm gonna turn the game off. The music's gonna keep going, and so you have to go to the task manager and stop the NFM process from there. Let's see if it's still like this in Phyrexian's new version. Ah, uh, it's not. Ah, uh, what a shame. It used to be like that. Those were the days. Where, like, the game, the game would crash for literally any reason whatsoever. But yeah, I skipped over a lot of details in this track. Oops, let's keep going here. Back here, there's these two checkpoints over this bump, which is a cool obstacle if you actually do the track properly. Like, you have to go up here, uh, and go over the bump and into the checkpoints, which is a small window here. And then there's this construction over here, which I don't... These guys are really suicidal. I don't know what's going on. It's basically designed to make you crash. It's, it's solely designed for that. You have to go through it, because it's a checkpoint. It's got a speed bump, and it's surrounded by walls. So if you go in, into it like with a lot of speed and with low health, you're basically screwed. Uh, I think that's basically it for this track. I mean, there's a lot of other different, uh, like, s similar sort of constructions in other tracks. Let's see. 
there's a tunnel there this has the spike pits this has the uh, the other spike spike pits over the the fixing hoop this has all kinds of stuff this one is full of little traps like if you try to heal your car on this track and let's say you miss eh, I did this with light oxide right and you go too fast there are spikes immediately what else uh, in the middle there's like this little house which you can go in oh god it's really hard with monster Oh boy, the glitches in this game. You can do this a lot better with smaller cars. Oh my goodness. Oh, there it is. There we go. You're basically safe in there if you want to cheese out this map. What else? I mean, the, there's little stuff like these two interlocking bumps. That's, that was never in the original game. Stuff like that was... is com like. I'm not, I'm not claiming to have, like, the only good designs of traps, by the way. There are a lot of people who have a lot of really good ideas in this game. And who made really amazing tracks. But this was definitely not, like, a lot of them were not in the original game. So it's pure creativity at work here. And it's likewise for, for uh, a lot of other people who were making stages at this point. Uh in like 2008 through 2012, let's say. Uh, Octathlon doesn't have much. I mean, it has all the obstacles, which are cool. It has like, like the array of ramps, which is very cool because there's no way around it. I mean, it's, you've got walls. What else? This doesn't have much of anything. It's not my track. Uh, and finally, okay, this is the party stage with a song called... A song called... Uh, Blood Moon by the KLF, which is, pretty, I think, is my favorite in the entire uh, NFM MDXV1. It's just so bright. It's perfect for a party stage, which is what this is. Oh, ho, ho. 40 degree angles and NFM. Hell yeah. It's beautiful. This is another one of those tracks, just like Sort of Justice, or Sort of Judgment, judgment that I just played. I just picked up uh, my own version and I just played and I had a ton of fun. It's basically just an arena and it's completely symmetrical. It's got 45 degree checkpoints. It's 15 laps so it just completely discourages you from even trying to race. I think I tried to do that a couple of times and you can imagine how that turned out. Not very... Well, there you go. But you just put this track on, have, like, I don't know, Radical One or Monster, just jump around. See if you can hit some people on the way. There you go, just like that. And there you go, you finished the game. And you finished my entire version of, of this game. I like, like the color scheme on this track too. It's very, it's very sunny, it's, you know, it's... You went through hell and you got rewarded by a, a nice sunny track called Crash and Burn, where you crash and burn. Oh ho, you're awesome. Thanks for playing. Check out aimgames.farmotion.com, which is still active, by the way. Very cool. Let me see, do I, have, do I want to talk about anything else? I don't know, I think I mentioned most of what I wanted. Choose Your Destiny is a really bad graphic. Wow. Especially for that background, which is also really bad. I plan on doing uh, Start Your Engines. I plan on doing uh, V2 very soon. I hope you enjoyed this video and this trip down memory lane. I certainly did. And I will see you next time.